Aloha, my name is Hui Hui Kanahele Mossman. I am from Hilo, Hawaii. I have been with Halau for 42 years. Um, my status is a kumu, and um, I come to know dying. First, I began dying with a uh, mamaki, and then I um, continued on that sort of process um, boiling gathering and boiling leaves with um, koko olau and then another process of dyeing that i practiced was uh, was olena and i've um, been doing it for a number of years i think over over the past 25 years i've been dying ahu the dyeing substance that i used was milo and I um, dyed a, a piece of material of uh, cotton um, fiber and these material that were dyed are for Aahu for this year's Merry Monarch. We gather them by going down to the coastline because that's where the healthiest Milo grow and we pick off the, the nuts of the Milo and specifically we picked the green nuts of the milo and it doesn't matter what size it was any green nuts of the milo was fine um and the goal is to pick a whole five gallon bucket of milo milo nuts the materials that you need to have on hand before starting to dye with milo is of course your milo nuts um you also need about two five gallon buckets um, you'll need a pakini, you need a stove, a propane stove that you can put the galvanized tub up on. Um, you'll also need a hammer to smash the nuts. You need a mordant. Um, this time I used lime as a mordant. Um, if you can go and research different kinds of mordants, you can use those. Um, you also need a very large piece of, of metal or wood that you can stir your dye with or um, turn your material with. You also need a, um, you also need, it, it, it's preferable to have a cover for your pakini because if you um, cook it without a, co without a cover and that you can also do that, then it it oxidizes um, really quickly. So the ideal thing is to have a cover for your pakini while you're boiling it. After you collect the milo nuts, um, what you want to do is you want to crush each nut. And when you crush it, you can already see the yellow that's in the skin of the nut, and that's the one you want. So you crush each nut and you take the seeds out and you throw the husks in another bucket and the seeds you can actually throw away or you can keep them um, depending on what you want to do with them. Perhaps you can plant them um, uh, for, for more legal trees. After you take off the husks and you throw them in the bucket, your bucket that you throw them in, you want to actually fill it halfway with water prior to throwing the husks in. And while you're throwing the husks in, the water will fill up, will gradually fill up all the way to the top. And when your um, husk filled bucket is fill, full and, the, and your um, nut crushing is complete, you wanna let that sit for about a week. You can perhaps let it so, sit for maybe two weeks, um, but it'll start to smell. So you wanna let it sit between a week, uh, a week, week and a half, so that all of the um, color will seep out of the, the nut husks. After you let it sit for about a week, um, and it's um, immersion time, then what you want to do first is you want to um, pre-soak your cloth in water because if it's any kind of cotton or cotton based cloth it'll shrink um about you know 10 to 20 percent when you start to dye it in the actual dye so what you want to do is you want to pre-wash it so it's already pre-shrunk before you start to dye and that's simply done by either throwing it in the washer 
or you can throw it in warm water in your bucket or your bikini. Then fill about a half uh, a, bu a half a bucket, or actually you can do a, a whole bucket of um, warm water in your pukini or hot water because you need the hot water or warm water to dissolve your mortgage. And what we're doing is that we're pre-soaking our material in the mordant so it'll soak up that mordant prior to immersing it in the dye. Um, and that's all you need to do is that do you dissolve your mordant in that hot water or the warm water and then throw your clothes in there that was pre-washed and then let that soak up for about 10 minutes. That's it. Take your cloth, your material out, and then you can throw that, that more than immersion away because it's stuff you put on plants anyway. This time, um, for dyeing our clothes, the more we used was um, lime or calcium carbonate. You can find it at any of the gardening stores. Um, and so it's safe to put on the ground. So after you throw that out, you take out your clothes and then you're ready to um, do your dye immersion. So now in your empty pukini, you want to throw uh, five gallons of water in there. And so that is a full bucket of water and you want to bring that to a boil. So bring that five gallons of water to a boil and then throw your uh, Milo swill in there after it comes to a boil. Throw your Milo swill in there and let that heat up. Um, you want to really try and have that come to a boil, but sometimes when there's a lot of water and you need it to come to a boil, it's gonna take a long time. So you can actually throw about two to three handfuls of salt in there because it lowers the boiling temperature. And so um, let that swill with water come to a boil. And then when you do that, that's the time when you want to take out your husks from the mixture, from the immersion dye. The key is to take out all the husks. Try not to leave any of the husks in there because the husk itself um, will turn the water brown. And if that's the color you want, then great. You, that's that's what you'll get with the husks but if you don't want that try and take out all the the, the husks out of that meal swill immersion dye and after you move, remove all of the husks from your immersion dye you can uh, throw your cloth in there so you want to let your cloth go for about um, perhaps maybe 10 to 15 minutes in that very very hot immersion dye water after the 10 to 15 minutes that's when i threw my vinegar in there so what the vinegar is going to do it's it's it could be another mordant dye but what the vinegar does for me is it acidifies the lime that i already threw in there lime is a really good base so it acidifies the lime so it activates the dye and then five more minutes of that turn your water off because you don't want your dye immersion bath to get too hot you already activated it with the vinegar so you turn your water off and then you let your cloth soak in that dye bath for about two to three hours after that frequently turning your cloth so that there's an even dye throughout all of their your material in there two to three hours you check the color um, see if that's the color you want you know the, the darker you want it the longer you let it stay and when you're ready to take it out um, you just pull all of the cloth out of the dye bath put it in another container like a laundry basket of some sort and then have a partner go over there and help you squeeze out your material by twisting it if you are dying with a powdery substance, the best thing to do is rinse it off. But if you're not dying with a powdery subst substance, it's not necessary to rinse it off, which is a good thing actually, because you don't want the dye to come off. So after you squeeze all of the water out, you um, hang it up to dry. Um, it is totally um, permissible and allowable to throw it in the dryer. 
um, and that's your color set and but you can also let it hang out to dry and after letting it hang out to dry um, you want to take it down immediately after it dries you want to remember though to not ne not let it dry in the Sun because the Sun will actually fade out the color it came out to a reddish brown but unlike other dyes that come out to reddish brown this has more of a yellow tinge to it so almost like a golden color um, I I am I am satisfied with that color I think that I perhaps would want to try and dye it again to get a more mustardy um, color to add to the reddish brown I think the biggest challenge um, in working through this process was the you know, the simple fact that we really aren't a hundred percent sure what color it's going to be um, at the end of the day um, being that we don't have the the, the time or um, um, the chance to experiment using different mordants or using cooking it through different temperatures um there's no precise way that we can know what color it'll be so um that that was the biggest challenge is just not knowing exactly what color your ahu will turn out to be i highly recommend this process of dyeing and uh, the reason for that is what well, number one it's it's a different kind of, of dyeing process i you know there's a lot of hula people out there and halals out there that are used to dying with the powdered oleno and although I think that's a great start um, number one it doesn't take the, the the work and the rigor it should take in dying your your hula clothes so this does this process does um, you know it takes time it, it, it you got to put in the work so that's one, one of the reasons why I recommend it. The other reason why I recommend it is because a lot of our native trees um, produce fruit and produce nuts. And so this is an opportunity to use that part of the tree, um, that part of the natural resource to, to um, um, for dyeing. Um, and so that is a, a very, it, it's a great way for us to again experiment with all of these different parts of the tree the different parts of the plant uh, for dyeing uses and that's the reason why i recommend this style of um, dyeing your awful.